Hello everybody, it's me, your good friend Sparky, and today we are continuing our discussion on the Paper Mario series. And oh boy, it's time to talk about Paper Mario Sticker Star. Where Thousand Year Door has gotten a reputation as being the best Paper Mario game, Sticker Star has definitely gotten a reputation as being the worst Paper Mario game, and for pretty good reason. But that's not to say I don't like this game, there are actually parts of this game that I like a lot. And I think it's important to cover the more positive aspects of this game before getting into its many, many issues. For starters, this game has an excellent visual style. It's not just Mario and company that have a paper look to them anymore. The entire world of Paper Mario Sticker Star has a crafted look to it. And there are points in this game that they really have fun playing around with the visual style. Not to mention that Sticker Star goes back to having a less smooth, choppier animation style to it, much like the first Paper Mario game, which I prefer over the smoother animation style of Thousand Year Door and Super Paper Mario. But at the same time, Mario and the different characters retain the smoother drawn look of Thousand Year Door. So it's really a combination of the best of both worlds, and overall, visually, this game is absolutely excellent. It looks great to begin with, it really fits in with the paper theme of Paper Mario, and I think they did a really good job with this. Also, when you consider the game's story, the game goes back to having a much later tone as well. Again, the later tone of the first Paper Mario is something I preferred over the darker tone and themes of its two sequels. There's no sort of dark settings or feelings or end-of-the-world type vibes that this game gives off. And honestly, I think that's the way Paper Mario should be. However, once you start to talk about the game's story, is when you start to get into the game's issues. Because while it does go back to having a lighter tone than the two games that preceded it, it goes so far in the opposite direction that it almost borders on being insulting to people who enjoyed those darker tones of Thousand Year Door and Super Paper Mario. And honestly, it's almost insulting to the people who like the first Paper Mario story as well. In fact, there's barely a story to this game at all. The events of Paper Mario Sticker Star are really the events of any generic Mario game. Bowser kidnaps Princess Peach, Mario has to go save her, then he does. There's no original villains here, there's no real conflict that we haven't seen a dozen times before. There's no twists and turns or anything really surprising about this game. Not to mention, there's no segments where you play as Princess Peach, there's no segments where you play as Bowser. Bowser doesn't even talk in this game, and hearing Bowser's dialogue was always quite an enjoyment in the other Paper Mario games. In regards to the changes that this game made to its story in comparison to the previous Paper Mario games, I remember reading something in the days of Club Nintendo, which was a service where Nintendo players could register their games online and fill out surveys in exchange for points so they could earn prizes, that in the surveys for Super Paper Mario, the story was not received well, or at least it wasn't talked about much. So naturally, Shigeru Miyamoto determined that that must mean people didn't like the story in Super Paper Mario. Which really makes no sense because if you ask anybody what the best part of Super Paper Mario was, it would probably be the story. Or at least, the story would be pretty high on the list of best things about that game. But apparently, not enough people talked about it, so they made the decision over at Nintendo when they were developing this game to cut out the detailed story. And as a result, you get a completely basic, no surprises story and a Paper Mario game that is totally unfitting when compared to the other games in the series. And in addition to the story being incredibly basic, so are the areas Mario visits, so are the characters that he encounters. There's no, like, originally designed characters or partner characters. There's no partner characters at all in this game. So unique companions like Bombette and Koops and Vivian, they're all gone. They are not in this game at all, and whenever you encounter a Toad or a Goomba or a Koopa, they just look like a normal Toad or Goomba or Koopa. So yeah, while this game has a great visual style, 
the designs of the world and the characters and its story are just so basic, it's almost boring. And when they try to have something mildly original looking or try to have a dramatic moment in this game, it almost comes across as cheap and unwarranted. And unfortunately, this game's story is not the only part of the game that completely fails at being a Paper Mario game. The gameplay is also incredibly basic. Paper Mario Sticker Star goes back to being a turn-based RPG, which is good. People generally prefer the gameplay of the first two Paper Mario games over the gameplay of Super Paper Mario. But much like the story in Paper Mario Sticker Star, the gameplay is so basic it's almost insulting. This game has a bizarre inventory-based battle system. Mario does not have any basic attacks he can perform. He has to pick from an inventory of stickers that he collects in order to do attacks, like jumping and using his hammer and using items. Granted, there is a pretty decent variety of stickers to pick from. Mario can do a lot in this game depending on what stickers he collects. There's lots of different varieties of jumps and hammers, and there's fire flowers, and I think there's Koopa shells and things like that you can collect and use in battle, and it's... it's honestly pretty interesting the way they set it up. And you can also find real-world objects scattered around this game that they call things. Things like desk fans and scissors and stopwatches. You can turn those into stickers, and you can use them in battle as powerful attacks. So as far as the basic gameplay is concerned, I can at least call it interesting. It's different. But interesting and different don't always mean good. For one thing, since Mario's attacks are completely limited to what's basically an inventory of items, if you run out of items in your inventory, you can't fight. I can say for certain with this game that there is nothing more frustrating than being in the middle of a boss fight and running out of stickers and having to run away and get more and start the fight over. That is awful. Speaking of the boss fights, sometimes you need specific things in order to either win a fight or make the fight much easier. And if you don't have that thing in your inventory, you're basically screwed. I remember one fight in particular in this game where you're fighting a giant cheap cheap on a dock. And in order to beat the cheap cheap, you need to have a fishing hook in your inventory. You use the fishing hook on the cheap cheap, and you pop it, and you win. Which does add an element of puzzle solving to the battle system, which, again, is interesting. But the problem is, when you're playing through this game for the first time, you never know which thing you are going to need in any given situation. When I first went to fight that cheap cheap, I didn't know I needed the fishing hook. I didn't even have the fishing hook in my inventory. I had to go find it. Because if you don't have the fishing hook, you literally can't beat the boss and you cannot proceed in the game. And that's not the only instance that that happens in this game. And because of that, you usually find yourself wandering around with half your inventory full of these thing stickers and you're too afraid to use them because you don't know if you're going to need them for an upcoming boss fight. It just results in a really frustrating experience at points. And if you keep looking deeper at this game's gameplay, you start to realize that it has several more problems than a bizarre inventory-based battle system. I think sometimes you also need specific things in your inventory in order to make progress in the overworld areas as well as battles. So again, you end up lugging around an inventory full of these stickers and you don't want to use them in case you need them later. And for being a game that's supposedly an RPG, there's really not much of an RPG here. As mentioned before, there's no partner characters, so there's no party members in this game. Mario doesn't have any real stats to track aside from his health. There's no attack upgrades, there's no special moves, there's no equipment to find, there's not even a level up system. And I think it's important to ask, if there isn't a level up system in your RPG, can you even really call it an RPG? This game almost defies definition. It's almost fascinating how they could take a beloved RPG series like Paper Mario and reduce it down to such a basic point that there's barely any content worth mentioning. 
It's actually to the point where the random battles you encounter on the overworld, the enemies you fight on the way to the boss of the area, don't mean anything. When you fight a random Goomba in this game, you have to use your stickers in order to fight at all. So you're eating through your inventory of items that you need to have for stronger enemies. And with no experience points or level up system, the only thing you are getting in exchange for fighting that Goomba is the occasional sticker and coins. And the only thing you use coins on in this game is to buy more stickers. So it really brings up the question, is it worth fighting the enemies at all? The only point to fighting enemies is to get more stickers, and in order to fight them, you have to use your stickers. So you just end up in this cycle of using stickers to get more stickers. So when you really think about it, what is the purpose to fighting them at all when you could just save your stickers for the boss? It's not like there's any shortage of free stickers you find in the overworld, either. They are everywhere in this game. You could very easily just save up all the really good stickers that you find lying around and fight bosses with that, and just ignore every enemy that you come across otherwise. It's just, this game is... wow, it's... just... why? Why would you make a Paper Mario game like this? Why would you make an RPG like this? Why would you make a game like this? It is just so basic and so not involved that it just almost results in a frustrating experience. However, that is from the perspective of a person who played all three Paper Mario games before this game came out. If I were to look at this game with the perspective of someone who has never played a Paper Mario game before, how would this game hold up? And using that perspective, I can come to the conclusion that Paper Mario Sticker Star is not awful. It's not the worst thing you could play. It's really basic, but it's inoffensive. You could sit down and play this game all the way through, and it would be fine. I sat down and played this game all the way through. It works. For what it is, it's it's perfectly average. It's fine. It's just a game. That is the main conclusion I can come to with Paper Mario Sticker Star. It is, in fact, a game. What kind of game it really is is a little harder to grasp, but it is, in fact, a game. And I mean, what else can you say about it past that point? So tell me, what do you think about Paper Mario Sticker Star? Let me know in the comments below, and please try to keep them clean and keep them respectful. And I think that's gonna wrap it up for now. Next time we're going to be moving on to Paper Mario Color Splash, the slightly better version of what Paper Mario Sticker Star tried to do. Until then, this is Sparky signing off for now. I'll catch you later.